Yes, uh, hello. Um, I do have a question. First of all, I wanted to, uh, to thank Mikita for the presentation. Uh, and um, my question actually concerns something that happened uh, less than a month ago. Uh, and I'm talking about the EDPB's uh, approval of uh, Euro privacy, which, uh, of course, first and uh, the only European data protection seal under GDPR. So, of course, it is a certification scheme uh, that's official uh, uh, under and as an optional accountability mechanism, I'm wondering uh, what is your uh, intake on the role of certification, especially certification GDPR, because of course it allows only uh, data processing activities to be certified, not uh, products or services or organizations. Uh, so yeah, my question is, what is your intake? Role certification and maybe to elaborate, uh, what is your opinion? Should it uh, we have it as mandatory mechanism, uh, which is contrary to what we have at the moment? So uh, the question was correct me if I'm wrong because there was an issue with connection on uh, what is my take on the cybersecurity certification scheme in the EU and uh, whether it's uh, fit in this uh, case. Correct. Oh, sorry, uh, I didn't know that there was a uh, problem with uh, the... Just the shortly. Here. Yeah. Yes, but it was about data protection certification, not cybersecurity. Okay, okay, data protection certification, cybersecurity, and whether it should be mandatory. Uh, well, certification, any certification is always a challenge, uh, especially in the EU, considering all the bureaucracy involved. Um, I'm not an expert on the certification schemes and initiatives in the EU, so I cannot give a really a rigid uh, consultation on this issue. Uh, but in my opinion, some certification is better than non-certification at all. Of course, products, they cannot be certified, uh, at least under certain under current conditions. But uh, if uh, the European Union initiative follows some existing standards or volunteer uh, certifications on information security like ISO certifications or SOC certifications. Uh, if it really works together, then uh, uh, security uh, certification mechanism volunteer one may lead to a success with data protection certification, if I'm making any sense. And whether it should be mandatory, definitely not at this point. Uh, first, I would love, just like with uh, SDLC, let's implement it, let's uh, test it and see at least for five, ten years whether it actually yields any result uh, and whether it is uh, effective. The biggest problem with any certification, is it effective or is it just a nice thing you make for a company to create a visibility of compliance? So only after a field test, we'll see whether it works. Hope I answered your question. If not, uh, feel free to add it into the chat and I will come back to it later because we have someone else raising hands. Right? Yes, we have Bettina. Um, hello. Uh, hi, Mikita. Thank you so much for the nice presentation. Um, I would like to ask a really practical question out of, a, let's say, frustration with uh, organizational development in universities recently. So um, I've been observing for a while this thing that we all know data protection is seen as this hindrance. You know, uh, we do something cool and then uh, the data protection officer comes and says we can't do that because it's against the law. So there is a strong um, Sorry. Um, uh, there's a strong perception um, that it's a negative thing and that's bad and we don't want that. I mean, we, we think data protection is something good and it's something that helps people and that enlarges our options. Um, but I see in a sense that uh, the lawyers also take that approach that they keep saying, oh, we can't do this because of data protection. So they give it a bad name as well, and this cycle repeats itself. And then sometimes um, I see colleagues or I see myself trying to make a proposal, like, hey, you know, data protection and, and IT could actually uh, empower 
people here. And the IT, uh, you, the use of IT would not be a further threat to data protection, but the use of IT would be an enabler of data protection. And I don't manage to get this excitement across to the lawyers, to the DPOs. And so we will never progress, you know, because there is this self-reinforcing cycle of uh, data protection is a hindrance. And how, and do you have any thoughts on how to get the lawyers who are always the ones listened to when it comes to data protection, how to get the lawyers in an organization excited about the enabling potential of IT? If you will, if you find a way to get a lawyer excited about their job, I will pay you a considerable amount of money for that. <laughs> but on a serious note, I think that the, also coming from my personal experience, something I heard from uh, other IT lawyers, mostly working in the private sector, the biggest problem when it comes to this cooperation between lawyers and developers and developers saying, uh, maybe we can cut corner here and uh, make it more cost effective and lawyer says no you cannot do this there is data protection blah 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 it all comes from inexperience and uh, lack of uh, skills in many cases i mentioned this before one of the biggest challenges is lack of uh, qualified specialists uh, this is exactly it we don't have enough lawyers who are able to work uh, productively effectively in it companies or with software projects because they rarely have understanding of what software project is, uh, especially when it comes to methodologies or particular requirements or pieces of code. And uh, we don't have uh, enough developers with uh, enough awareness about uh, why uh, privacy or uh, data protection requirements uh, are necessary. Uh, so I don't have a really quick solution as of now, like there is no magic field to get a lawyer excited about data protection in, or working with uh, the software developers, but uh, I think that the answer will be in training, effective training and with education, because I think that sooner or later, uh, data protection officer or lawyer in IT, or maybe there will be a different name for that, but compliance specialist in IT, this will be a completely different profession and completely different degree, perhaps a master degree, because we see a huge demand for that course it will take later years sorry to disappoint you but that's how progress works and uh, unfortunately just like law tries to keep up with the progress so do we education and uh, skills we always try to keep up with uh, the developments so there is a solution like I described but yes it will take years and for now we do with the trainings we do the seminars I hope with this seminar helping someone at least for a little bit. And uh, yeah, for now, this is the only way. Thank you. I have one too, if I may ask. Go ahead. Um, so, so question, Mikita, you've been talking a lot about um, approaches to kind of make a software project GDPR compliant or to introduce privacy by design, but how do you document that during the process so that in case things go wrong, you can actually plausibly prove that you did everything that was in scope and that was necessary? Proof to whom? You mean to authorities like data? Proof to a court in case you have a breach? So the trick is uh, doesn't really matter what you did, uh, meaning what you were working on, only the uh, final result matters, right? So the court won't really look into whether you gave someone a task or whether you uh, came back to some issue during one of your sprints, of course not. Uh, the court will only assess whether the final product was uh, compliant or not. So my, my ideas were mostly aimed at developers, project managers, managers or team leads, like how you organize the internal work of your team. How do you avoid uh, the major mistakes and how do you keep the main things in front of your eyes? But then the end result, 
this is what uh, is going to be scrutinized in court or by data protection authority. They, again, they won't really look at your backlogs, uh, your agile methodologies, your risk uh, uh, assessment methodologies. They will only look whether you conducted DPIA, who did that, uh, what was the qualification of people, and uh, whether you achieved it, whether you at least the, uh, showed enough uh, uh, interest in that, uh, whether you did everything which was uh, foreseen. And uh, here, DPIA uh, as a risk uh, uh, mitigation and risk management element would be key, I would say. Uh, this is how you document most important issues related to what impact on rights that might be, uh, might have been what we had in mind when we were developing the project and what uh, risk mitigation uh, strategies and what tools we implemented, what TOMS we implemented ba based on DPIA. So when it comes to court uh, or DPA, Data Protection Authority, uh, DPA would be key and your actions following the DPA. Uh, everything else, all your other internal documents, I think not, depending on judge, of course, but I'm more than sure that, uh, that they won't be interested. Thanks, Mikita. Um, I, I don't see any remaining questions. So uh, thank you again for the talk. Um, and it thank you. <laughs> it was my pleasure, all mine. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope at least something was useful for you. And I hope uh, we hope to see you on our next SIF uh, seminars. Thank <laughs> you.